By the time I was 10 or 11, I was smoking probably close to a pack a day. Smoking had been ingrained into me. It was part of who I was, it seemed like. It was, that was smoking, having a cigarette, was, that was Brian. That was me. I hadn't really thought much about joining the military at, at you know, a young age, but uh, I loved it. I enlisted in November of 1972. Within a year after I got in the military, I had met my future wife. We were very young, and we wanted to see the world. Travel all over Europe. We saw things and we were able to experience stuff that most people would never have the opportunity to do. I was stationed in Germany until I had my heart attack when I was 35. So I went from being able to travel the world and see the world to confining my life either at home or going to doctors. That's all because of the cigarettes. Well, I had the heart attack. I had the first defibrillator where they had to cut my chest open and put the patches on. Uh, then I had a bypass operation. Then my lungs started going bad. Then I had to be on oxygen. Then I had stents put in. Then I had stents in stents put in. I was in the hospital for months. I spent days in emergency rooms, hundreds of IVs. My poor wife having to sit down in emergency rooms for hours upon hours upon hours. My kids getting called up. Dad's in the hospital again. He might die. you got to come down. It was, yeah, it was a lot. Every doctor along the way said, knock it off, stop smoking. Had to stop smoking. Even to the time when I had my first run for a heart transplant. I had smoked. I don't know why I did it. And then the day I went to the doctors, they, they always draw your blood, and they gave me the pager. They said, okay, you, you're on the transplant list. That's the key to the hope for the future. Is you get the pager and, okay, now I'm going to get a new heart and we'll be able to live. And that evening, the doctor called up and said, Brian, we found nicotine in your blood and you need to come back tomorrow and give me back the uh, pager. I'm not listed anymore. That was crushing for, for me, for my wife, for my kids. It was hard. And I screwed up. I screwed up bad. And I just screwed up bad. I would find never seen a cigarette in my entire life. I truly knew I would find never ever seen one. My flesh picked it up with something. was very difficult for to sad and say that could never happen to me i don't smoke that much so i'm not really a smoker well i didn't think i smoked that much either but i still got oral cancer and it came back twice now i have no jaw and no teeth my tip is if you smoke you're a smoker just like i was and my at age 17 is when I really started smoking on a regular basis. And then in 2000 is when I found the little sore on the inside of my mouth and it wouldn't go away. And on a routine dentist appointment, we saw it and he thought it looked suspicious. So he did a biopsy. Well, it came back as mouth cancer. So I had to go through radiation. And then in December is when we discovered the tumor in my larynx. The day of my surgery, I can remember smoking up to the front door of the hospital. That's how addicted I was. And I didn't know that I was so addicted until after I got out of the hospital. When I went home, I went to like I went to play to my bedroom, picked up a cigarette, put it in my mouth, and lit it. And for the first time, I really looked at myself in a mirror. And I thought, Terry, what are you doing? 
you have a hole in your neck and you're getting ready to use what did it to you. My advice to somebody who doesn't smoke, don't ever starve. My advice to those who do smoke, please quit. I have a tip for you. Make a video of yourself before all this happens. Read a children's storybook or sing a lullaby. I wish I had. The only voice my grandson's ever heard is this one. When you have a hole in your neck, don't face the shower head. Keep your stomach covered when you're outside. Be very careful shaving. Get used to eating only soft foods. Clean out your speech valve twice a day. You can quit. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. When smoking gives you COPD, you learn to lie a little bit. When I was 44, a doctor diagnosed me with COPD because I smoked. As my COPD gets worse, moving around gets harder, so I have to pace myself. My tip is, if you're having people over for Thanksgiving, start cooking in October. Oh God, I was scared. I went, oh my God, how am I gonna get a needle in my eye? I went to sleep and I pictured them, the doctor just <laughs> coming at me. I'm Marlene. I smoked and got maculate degeneration. So I don't see very well. I didn't know what to expect. I wish I could have kept my eyes closed, but I couldn't. She cleaned my eye with um, a Benadine solution, which burned the hell out of it. Then she puts a clamp on my eye to keep it open. So I said, oh great, now I really can't keep my eyes closed. And um, then what she does is she takes two large Q-tips and puts one in the corner of the eye and one at the outer corner of my eye for about a minute and it's to numb. And then she takes this instrument, which I really never saw, and actually puts it to my eyeball. She's indenting it, my eyeball. It's an area where it's marked off where the actual needle goes in. Oh, I remember the first time she did it. I don't want to sound gross or anything, but it sounded like an egg was cracking. She took the needle out and she said, okay, it's out. And oh my God, it, it, it did, it bothered me. And I went home and I felt miserable and I said to myself, why the hell did I ever smoke? I would never have smoked if I knew that I was going to be going through this. I started smoking probably around 11 or 12 years old, you know, and then within a couple of years, of course, it's just part of your life. I quit in 2012 on May 2nd about one o'clock in the afternoon in the parking lot of the hospital I was about to get admitted to because my left lung had collapsed. I was in the hospital for over two months and then I was home with a tube coming out of my chest for about six weeks after that. So, and that's when I was diagnosed with, with stage four and eventually I will probably die from, from COPD. Um, I had worked in the construction industry. I love to build things in our old home. It was a fun place, and I built it all with my own hands, the walls, the ceiling, the floors, and, and that got taken away. And we owned a boat, and I had to give it up. I couldn't hand, physically handle it anymore. Um, so we thought, well, let's maybe try to travel a little bit. So we bought a camper. And I had to give that up because I just couldn't, you know, it's physically demanding. So your world just keeps shrinking. When you lay in bed at night, you're by yourself. That's when it weighs on you. You can quit. 
For free help, visit cdc.gov tips.